Good afternoon and welcome to this session on Power Automate. Those of you who've watched some of my previous sessions should be aware that Power Automate is part of the Power Platform and I'm quite passionate about the Power Platform and some of the opportunities that it gives us and yourselves ways of improving and integrating your systems. So Power Automate is a automation tool that allows you to carry out actions and tasks and move data between systems. In the past, uh, it's been possible to trigger changes and trigger flows from uh, modified fields within Business Central. So for instance, if you go into a customer card and change a description or a name on the customer card, you could then trigger a flow from that, which then carried out a task or a function, maybe it updates the data somewhere else, maybe it sends an email or something like that. In the last version of Business Central, so version 20.1, which was released in May, they've added some new functionality in. So Personally, I think this is one of the best pieces of functionality that Microsoft have added to the product in a number of years. So I'm going to talk you through and show you what you can now do and some of the possibilities. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that we've activated the functionality. So within your business central environment, if you're in the SaaS environment, this is if you look for feature management. And open the page. You'll see there's an option here saying run Power Automate flows without leaving Business Central. You can enable it, so click in the drop down and just say all users. Then once you refresh the system, that functionality will now be available to you. So what I've done is I've built a couple of uh, sample flows, which I'm going to show you what they are and what they do at a very high level, so don't worry too much. Uh, of course, if you've watched my previous sessions, you'll also know that Power Automate is a low code and no code function. So even if you don't know development, if you're not fond of coding and developing as such, you should still be able to produce some reasonably powerful flows just from using simple drag drop, filling in some basic parameters. So to start with, we'll open up a customer card. So if I go to my customer list and then open up the Canon group, good old Canon group, we'll see that within Business Central, there's now a new series of actions on the customer. So here we've got automate and under automate, you can see there's a power automate drop down which allows us to create a flow and manage flows. And I've also got two additional actions here. So these two actions are flows that I've already created. So these, as we go through the process in a minute, you'll see are flows that I've created using this action here. And then once I've told it where I want it to appear in Business Central, I can then trigger it from the pages that I want to in Business Central. So to start with, we can run the first one of these two actions. So this is a really simple workflow that I've built. All this does is when I click it, it will send an email out to someone I specified, ask them to send a brochure. So I click on the customer details email, and what you then get is a pane appears on the right hand side within, to, uh, within Business Central. This is then building the connections up that are required and gives you the run flow action. So I press the run flow, it's run it, and it's carried out the action I've asked. I'll then open up my Outlook, What you can then see is I've now got an email in there. Which says new customer email to Dan Cook saying, please send a brochure to this customer and the customer address details. So nice and simple. You can run that any number of times you want. There's the next one coming in. Obviously, what you could do potentially is you could, if you wanted to modify Business Central slightly, put some flag field onto the customer card and say, once I've sent this email, don't allow me to send it again. Getting simple little piece of development, but we're keeping this as complete standard as we can for now. So that's that's the simplest flow. So what I do now is I'll show you what that flow looks like, so you can get an idea of the simplicity of it. So all this flow is in the background here. It's got three steps that I've built. The first one is the trigger from Business Central. So this, when we create a new flow in a minute, you'll see this creative. But basically, it's a flow saying, when I get this record from Business Central, this is what I want you to do with it. And on this thing, all I've done, I said, on page 21, which is the customer page, that's where I want it to appear. It could be you might want it to appear on more than one page, but we're just got the customer card for now. So once we've been past the record, what we then need to do is go and get the record. So we've been told what record we've got. We need to go and get it. So we're looking at our sandbox environment, uh, the sales demo company, going off and getting the customer based on the system ID. And again, all this is, is I need to go and say from this drop down list here, use the system ID. That then knows which customer to go and get. Once it's got the customer, 
I've added the email action here. I've told it who to send it to. Again, this could be automated. So maybe you could look at the salesperson card on the customer, go and get that person's email address and then use that to send the email out. There's numerous ways of doing this, but I've keeping this really simple. We give the email a subject, put a bit of text in there. You know, please send a brochure to this customer. And then we tell it the fields that we want to use from the customer card. So again, we click in there, we get a drop down list with all the different fields from the customer card in. We pick the ones we want. When we're happy with that process, we save it. Once you've saved it, it appears in Business Central as an action on the page you specified. So really simple. That took me about five minutes to put that flow together initially. We've also got a more complicated one, so I'll go through this more complicated one in a moment. But let's for now, let's create a new automate from start. So if I click on the Power Automate and then create a flow action, you'll see it takes me out to Power Apps to the Power Automate functionality. It will create me a flow and insert the very first step for me. So this is the selected record step. So at this point, it's told this flow, this is the customer you want to use. As I said previously, you can say what page you want it to appear on. So I just want it to appear on page 21, and then you add a new step. We're going to go and recreate that one very quickly than we did previously. So we search for Business Central connector. So Business Central, we have a series of different types of action actions we can carry out of Business Central. In this case, I'm using the get record function. I can tell it the, the various things. So this is going to be the sandbox. Sales demo company. And he said I'm using the version two APIs. Guess the standard out of the box ones. And I'm going to be using the customers. In there, I'm telling it to use the system ID. So that's the particular unique identifier for the record. Add a new step in. In this case, it's going to be email. So Outlook, we are going to send an email, but you can see here you can also create events, create contacts in Outlook, delete events, modify events, all kinds of things you can do with lots of different different actions for each connector that are in the system. So we're going to use send an email. OK, so what we saw a minute ago, you can either type in manually an email address. So in this case, it's Dan Cook. You can also use this add dynamic content. So for instance, if you've you could use a user email here, or if you've already retrieved another record, you could get something from that record, such as the salesperson's email address, and use that in here. So this is my test email, and let's say customer test email. Pop in the customer display name just for now, maybe address one, address two, something like that. Give it a title, test email. Save that. Once this is saved, we'll go back into Business Central. And we can see here we've now got a new test email action. So again, I've from the customer card, I've gone out, I've created a flow. I've built that flow very quickly and very easy as we saw. I know it's a simple example, but just to show you the simplicity of it. Gone out, come back into the customer card, and now the action's there with this test email. If I click that. I'll get the pop out pane on the right hand side again. Which is building the connections up. It's logging me into my email, connecting me to Business Central. It's the first time I run it, so that's why it's connecting these up. Click on Run Flow. Carried it out. Then go across into my email. You can see I've got an email there with the detail that we just put into it in that flow. So really simple. Okay, it's just a basic example. So the next one I've got is this new customer process. This is a bit more complicated, so we'll step through this and I'll give you an idea about what it's doing. It may not be the cleanest solution. It may not be perfectly designed and someone that's got a bit more of a, a technical now than I have might think of a better way of doing it, but it's to show you some of the things you can start doing with this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the Power Automate and what I've built in the uh, Power Automate functionality. So by clicking on Manage Flows, it takes us to our Power Automate management screen. And then we can select the uh, flow that we want to look at. So in this case, the new customer process. Click on that takes you into the main flow screen. This gives you all kinds of information about what connection to use, when it was last run, how you could potentially improve the flow as well. 
uh, and we're going to edit the flow from here. So this then takes us into the screen that you just seen a moment ago that allows you to design the flow. So I'm going to walk you through these steps just to give you a very high level overview of what we're doing in each of these steps. Uh, and then once we've done that, I'll run the flow and show you what it's done. So first thing it does is gets past the record from Business Central. So this is passing us the particular customer record we're on, for instance, the Canon Group. We then go off, retrieve the record. So we actually get the record and it's stored in memory. And then in a minute, we'll be doing something with Teams. So what we do here is we use the Teams connector and I'm retrieving a list of all the channels in the projects team with this environment. So for instance, if you use Teams, you know that you can have different teams and within each team, you can have multiple channels. So this is the projects channel listing the teams. We'll come back to that in a moment. Um, then I'm initializing a variable. So I'm building this little variable here called Teams Channel ID, which I'm going to use in a few moments. Again, this is what they call low code, so or even no code, I guess. I'm not actually doing any proper coding. I'm just using variables and drag and drop and those kind of things. So then we enter this condition. So what we're doing now is we're looking through all of these project teams. So we're looking so the product channels, we're looking at the product channels to see if we've got a channel that matches the display name of the customer. So for instance, if I'm running this from the Canon group, have I got a channel in my projects team called the Canon group? If I do down here, what I then do is I take the team channel ID and I store it in the team channel ID variable that I declared up here. And if I don't find a channel which matches the name, the Canon group, for instance, I then create a new channel with the customer's name. So in this case, the Canon group, and then I set the team channel ID variable to match the ID of that channel I've just created. So I'm saying, right, do I have a channel called the Canon group? If I don't create one and store me the ID of that channel, and if I do go and get the channel and store that channel ID, and we'll use that in a moment. The next thing we do is we're going to connect to Outlook and we create an event. So here we're going through, we're creating a new calendar event called Customer Kickoff 4 and then the company name. So Customer Kickoff 4, the Canon Group. Uh, then we set a start and an end time. So I've got some basic calculations in there. So in this example, it just creates me an entry for tomorrow morning between I think 11 a.m. and midday or something like that. But you could do all kinds of calculations. You could potentially use Cortana to look for a gap in the calendar uh, and use that to insert an entry. There's all kinds of logic and um, functionality built in for that. But this is very simple. Once we create that event, it then sends an email to Dan Cook. So this is a, an email saying new customer and then the customer's name. So the Canon group, uh, a lot of text in here as well. You can see that I'm using HTML formatting as well. So I can format the email to look a lot prettier than a standard plain text email. So hi Dan, this is to let you know the team channel for the Canon group has now been created. You can access the Canon group in Business Central. Uh, and there's also a link inserted there that links me back to the Canon groups page. Uh, you know, thanks to the admin team. Again, this is hard coded with Dan Cook's email address and it uses his name in there, but you could have some logic that retrieved perhaps a salesperson from Business Central, use their email address, automatically filled in their name into the body as well. Then what we do is we're going to get a, a mention. So if you use Teams and you type in uh, a message in Teams, you know you can put the at and then someone's username and it highlights it and it notifies them that you've mentioned them in a message. So what I'm doing is I'm asking it to get me a mention for Dan Cook. Again, we could use this as being the salesperson code from Business Central. And then once we've done that, we are going to post a message into a channel in Teams. So in this case, we are posting it into the projects team and then into the team channel that has already been created or we've just created for this particular customer. Uh, it puts a message in there, so please join me in congratulating Dan Cook in this instance. He's used the mention there. I'm winning the custom of the customer name, and then it says the account card can be accessed here, and it puts a URL in that takes you back out to Business Central. So that's the basic steps we've gone through. We've retrieved the record from Business Central. We've checked if a team channel exists. If it doesn't, we've created one. We've created a calendar entry in Outlook. We've sent an email in Outlook. We then posted a message to Teams to say that we've now got this new customer uh, and basically notifying a person or potentially the whole company if you wanted. So simple steps, simple overall process, but hopefully you can start to see how this could be used to actually trigger and carry out functions and bits of automation within Business Central. So let's go back into Business Central and run it and see what happens.
So within Business Central, we'll go to a new customer card on board the, dealing with the Canon group now. Um, so let's go back to our customer list and go to Candoxy Canada. So we'll open up this particular customer card. Then you should see once opened up on the Automate tab, we'll have the same options here. So again, it appears on every single customer card, those particular uh, Power Automate actions. Uh, and then we're going to run the new customer process. So we click that. The pane pops out. Has all the connections. And then says, do you want to run the flow? Yes, please. That's now run successfully. So first of all, let's go into our and Cook Outlook. You can hear the bong there, hopefully. So here we have the new email just popped in. So here you go. Hi, Dan. Just let you know the new team channel for Candoxy Canada has now been created. You can access Candoxy Canada in Business Central here. And that's got a link in there. If I click on that link, that then opens up a new tab and takes me into Business Central as well. So again, nice, quick, easy link to take you straight into the customer card in Business Central. Yeah, Candoxy Canada. Marvellous. Also, have a quick look at his calendar entries. And then here we can see that we've got, that's too funny enough because I've already run it for the Canon group. Um, but there we go. There's a customer kickoff Candoxy Canada. So that's run. It's created me the entry between 11 and 12. Again, it's on a Saturday. If I put some more logic in, I can make it look only for weekdays, for instance, as well. Uh, and it's put a basic agenda in there. So introduction to Candoxy Canada, look at agreements and agree next steps. So again, nice and simple process. No one's had to create that. It's been done automatically. We now open up our Teams. This is the Teams web browser version rather than the uh, installed version, but it looks and feels exactly the same. So once this is opened up, we can go to the to show the channel first of all. So there's now Candoxy Canada Inc. So it's created me this new channel here. And within the new channel in the projects team, there's now a new entry in here. So again, new customer, please can join me in congratulating Dan Cook. And you see that's highlighted. So that is a link. So he would have got notification as well saying, here's a, uh, a new mention for you. And again, there's a link in there. So if you click on that link, same as before, it takes you out to Business Central and opens up that particular customer card. There you go, Candoxy Canada. So again, that was a really simple flow, not too complicated. Um, a little bit of logic in there, uh, but no actual coding, no learning a new language or anything like that. It's just been drag and drop and using some standard functions that are fairly simple to Excel functions. So hopefully that's given you some kind of idea of what you can do with these flows and potentially a little bit of a taster about, um, or you know, got your brain going about what you could do with this and how you potentially could use it inside your own systems and environments. It's worth noting as well that normally there are costs associated with uh, running Automate. So if you want a license to run an Automate, there is a cost to it. However, if you already have a Business Central SaaS license, you automatically get the ability to run any flows that connect into Business Central. So anything you, you build that is triggered from Business Central, there is no cost implication for. It's all covered by your existing license. So if you've got any ideas or thoughts, or you want to have a chat with us about things you could do with these Power Automates and the flows, please drop me an email. Um, it'll be going out uh, in the emails after this meeting or contact Catherine, get to put in contact with me um, and I look forward to speaking to some of you in the future. Thank you.